back then, the idea of seeking out wings as the cut of chicken you're serving was unheard of. No one stops to think about a time when they weren't everywhere. Ever wondered the fascinating histories of your favorite foods, from wings to waffles to candy ring pops? Well, you are in luck. The History Channel's hit series, The Food That Built America, is back, exploring the origins of America's most iconic foods and the titans who invented them. Adam Richman is a culinary traveler, author, gastronaut, <laughs> uh, and contributor on The Food That Built America. Welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Okay, so we start with wings yes. and buffalo wings, which of course aren't really buffalo wings, but chicken yes. wings. What's the story there? <laughs> yes. So the thing is, wings were never a traditionally prepared cut of the chicken. They were leftovers. They were used for soups, for stocks. They were throwaway pieces. But in the South, they would make a Sunday chicken supper. They were the like preferred pieces, known as the preacher parts breast thigh leg and the kids would get the wings but that generation began loving this cut that was always a throwaway cut and then the big debate is who is the originator is it Teresa and John Bellissimo of the Anchor Bar in Buffalo but as we've come to find out there was an African-American man named John Young who had a restaurant first called wings and things in Buffalo he was doing wings there with a, a DC sauce called mumbo sauce but when racial violence and racial riots gripped the city he moved he never got credit up until oh. recently for really being the father so of buffalo the wing. wings are really from buffalo new york from yes. buffalo new york yeah, yes yeah. I, bison don't actually have yeah. the ability to fly and yeah. you are such an encyclopedia yeah. of food all things food yes what about breakfast breakfast we know it to be the most important meal of the day that's Some what they say, say. Yeah. Yes. at least, at least yeah. breakfast makers say that right? <laughs> right of course that's a very smart <laughs> yeah. distinction to make yeah. yeah well you also have to remember that three things occurred in pretty rapid succession number one the advent of the toaster oven which and when it first came out was prohibitively expensive it would be the equivalent of five hundred dollars in today's money but then once it was in every american's home they understood that this type of cooking modality could be applied to breakfast so waffles which you normally needed a messy waffle iron and a press you could just throw it in a toaster make a pastry throw it in a toaster then Ronald Ray then you have the advent of the television in 1950 so you could reach a whole new audience and then Ronald Reagan's administration says you could advertise directly to children so now you start seeing tie-ins Nintendo cereal fruity pebbles becomes an offshoot of the Flintstones Pac-Man cereal mm -hmm. so this thing becomes this juggernaut of an industry but yeah. It, you know, back in the day, breakfast was leftovers. It wasn't this amazing array of snap crackles and pops. <laughs> <laughs> um, from that, we go to our next thing, which is candy and, and yes. ring pops and sort of how did we get so into to this sugary treat? It's a, it's a great question and I think that you know it changes from region to region but there are some things that we come to know and love so for example around the holidays where you think of marshmallow peeps but we, we never stop and really get into the, the making of them and why you know these really kind of grotesque little oh. marshmallow uh, birds. I don't like with, the peeps. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you that just shows you you're a person of tremendous character but yeah. the other <laughs> thing is little things these fun stories so for example example, um, an inventor wanted to stop his daughter from sucking her thumb. They made the ring pop. Mm. Then kids wanted a lollipop that didn't have a stick that they could save for later. Then you had the push pop. Um, a man named Hans Reigel in Bonn, Germany, wanted to make a candy to commemorate the dancing bear shows he watched. Take the first two letters out of each of those three words, Hans, Reigel, and Bonn. You have Haribo. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Haribo Candy Company came from. So what's kind of fascinating is you begin to learn, like, why we have these little candy corns and why we have these marshmallow peeps. And, you know, and it's really kind of fascinating to get to the why of these things. And remember, in the 80s, you also saw two-income households, latchkey kids. Kids had agency. They could buy the stuff that they wanted. Mm. And it really changed the market forever. I'm going to ask you an impossible question. Uh, you've been doing this for so long. Pop culture and food, what is the most fascinating element that you've come across. Oh, that is a great one. Well, this season, one of the coolest was that the Chick-fil-A sandwich started as a menu item at, at, at Waffle House. I, I think that most people don't realize that mm. connection. I also think a lot of people don't realize things like the barbecue, the home barbecue was championed by Henry Ford, who used to give away a barbecue grill with the sale of each Model T Ford, or that the guy who created the Weber grill was inspired by the creation of a buoy the way an ocean buoy is built, that's how he built this clamshell 
amazing wow. grill that's so back, changed it. Back to the Chick-fil-A thing. So it was at Waffle House. Mm -hmm. It was so good. They said, we're going to do a spin-off restaurant sort No, of thing. no. Uh, uh, a man named S. Truett <laughs> Kathy had a little place near a Delta plant. They got a, uh, a whole delivery of chicken breasts that were too big to fit in that little partition tray. So they went to him and they said, listen, we can't, we can't use these. Why don't you make a sandwich out of it? And he had no idea how to. He made it. It still resembles the exact one he did. Two pickles, mayo on a wow. non-seeded bun. But Chick-fil-A, the A, is because it was a grade-A chicken breast. And that's actually where it came from. They gave it to Waffle House, who wanted it to bolster their lunch and flagging lunch and dinner sales. And then it did better than the waffles. So they're like, 86 this <laughs> uh, Wow. <laughs> All right, who knew? He's awesome. Perfect segment. Only thing we're missing is food. Now yeah. we're hungry. Uh, I'm sorry, next time. Next Adam time. Richmond is a contributor on Food That Built America. New episodes air Sunday nights at 9 p.m. on the History Channel. When it comes to food, I want you to be my phone a friend yeah. on anything trivia. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, my trivial pursuit yeah. teammate. There we yeah. go. Adam, great to meet you. Thanks great for being to meet here. You too.